Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. Brought to you by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. A gorgeous day for football at Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium in Brookings, the 18th edition of the Dakota Marker. Tip your cap to the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, knocking off the North Dakota State Bison by the final score of 27 to 19. And welcome in to the Bison Football Show. Jeff Colhane here with the head coach, Matt Entz. Coach, you knew this one was going to be an absolute battle, hard-fought game. Give me your, your thoughts just overall on this one. Well, I didn't think we executed very well early. And you can't give a good football team, can't spot them 21 points. And... Uh, had a, a long list of self-induced issues, uh, penalties, turnovers, and stuff to win again, on the road uh, in the Missouri Valley when you're going to play like that in the first two quarters. Yeah, uh, no question about it. Um, outside of the obvious, the, the outcome, the final score, sure. your biggest frustration slash disappointment with the game today? Well, you know, we, we couldn't contain the run game. I mean, the second play of the game was 75 yards. They end up with 170. I mean, he got uh, I bet 60 to 70 percent of his run plays came on about three runs yeah. today. Um, you know, we, we can't give up explosive plays. We talked about it all week that we need to keep the ball in front of us, make them drive the field. When we did that, we had opportunities to stop them. Uh, can't turn the ball over in a good football team, and we got to finish with points some way, somehow in the red zone. Uh, we didn't do that a couple of drives, and uh, you see that was probably the difference in the game. Yeah, walk me through that second play um, that you mentioned. Yep. Pierre Strong Jr. 75-yard touchdown run. It, it was a mid-zone play. I, th I think we were in some sort of quarters coverage. I, I don't know where our linebacker was again I tried to look at the scoreboard it was kind of mumbled at that time but uh, you know to go 75 yards in the second play uh, that's a huge momentum and, and uh, all of a sudden there's a chink in the armor and our guys are starting to think rather than you know getting them knocked down and make them earn it yep you're able to even things up later on in the first quarter 22 yard touchdown passing play Cam Miller finds Josh Babich in that front pylon pretty good throw and a, a well-designed play by Tyler Roll executed to perfection by your guys it, it was I mean I, I thought offensively you take away the the turnovers I thought we were able to move the football at times we got it down in the red zone uh, we turned it over a couple times in the red zone on either downs or traditional turnovers that's what's frustrating but uh, I, I think we were able to move the ball consistently um, just we couldn't get points on it. Yep, absolutely. First half, the uh, second quarter, obviously, did not go the way Matt Entz and his team would have liked to have gone. South Dakota State, nearly 11 minutes time of possession in that uh, second quarter of play. Let's take a look at our first half highlights brought to you by Gate City Bank. Fine. SDSU scoring on its second play on a 75-yard touchdown run. Here's Zach Mathis who makes a nice move. Mathis with the fourth straight game. He comes up with a reception. This is a big one, too. Hoff said coming in. done a nice job of filling in for him, though. On the toss here. Nothing doing. Swarm down as strong as brought down. And guess who? Cole Wisniewski Called right it. on the spot <laughs> here with a third down. And six, Miller going deep, looking for Watson, incomplete, and a flag is thrown. One, so it'll be second down and 11. Miller, play fake, now will get out of there and run it himself. Cam Miller with lots of open running room, makes a nice cut, and slides, the great baseball player he was, to the 23-yard line and picks up a Bison first down in a game that was 17-all in the fourth. He wants to throw here. Goes to Josh Babbage for a touchdown! What a catch by Babbage! Hell out of the end zone for six weeks. Now two touchdowns in two games. Miller steps up, waiting. Lofts this one. That's caught! That's Sproles who got open. Or excuse me, Braylon Henderson who gets open all the way out to the 41-yard line and a Bison first down. He'll keep it himself, trying to get it. Gets a good block, and he's still on his feet. Miller out of bounds at the 40-yard line. City Bank, how about our halftime stats from Nodak Insurance Company? You see some of the numbers there. And, you know, Coach, second quarter. Uh, I know you're going to talk about penalties, obviously. That's frustrating for you. Time of possession. Your defense got off the field a couple of times and just some some breaks there that did not go your way. Maybe didn't create your own breaks in that second quarter. Well, you're exactly right. And uh, the big penalty that I that I remember is after the interception, we had them fourth and eight, I believe. And all of a sudden, then we run into the, the punter. Mm -hmm. And 
frustrating situation, frust frustrating circumstance, because that's a topic, that's a situation that has been covered. If it's been once, it's been a thousand times, and uh, we got to find a different way to explain it. Apparently, because uh, we had kids just not understanding today. Yep. For your offense, when you're when you're on the sidelines, how tough is that to find a rhythm to try and get something going and get things back going on that side of the ball? Well, it's extremely difficult when you when you're off the field and and you want to be out there. You you want to impact the game in a positive way and uh, it's complimentary football we talk about it all the time all three phases making sure that they're allowing the other one to have success or, or a level of success yep as you're in the locker room thinking about how to how to get your guys going what was your main message to your group at that point in time we got to get out of our way our own way I, I, they were up whatever the score 24 to 7 at the time yeah. but or, or 21 to 7 but I don't know if we've done anything to really help ourselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't spot them a three touchdown lead because of your uh, miscommunication, missteps. Uh, you know, it, not a good deal. Yep. And uh, I got to do a better job of getting our kids ready during the week, and, and that will happen. Bison down 24 to 7 at halftime. They come charging back, give themselves a chance to win. We'll talk about that, see those highlights when we come back on the Bison Football Show. Teamwork, talent, dedication, leadership. These values that win championships on the field also build community, improve lives, a difference every single day for you for our neighbors for our community for a better way of life Gate City Bank This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. And hey, welcome back to the Bison Football Show. Come out of the locker room. Wasn't great early. Had the turnover on the second play, but... Um, whatever your message was to your defense in the second half, they obviously got it, Coach, because they limited South Dakota State's chances throughout the final 30 minutes of play. Well, they did a good job, and I don't think we changed anything just very much from a strategy standpoint, yeah. from a schematic standpoint. We just played better. Uh, we made plays when we were supposed to, and, uh, you know, why, why, the, why the slow start early? Uh, if, if I knew I'd 
I'd be a millionaire, mm -hmm. but that, that's frustrating. Yep. They try to go quickly on one of their early drives in the third quarter and go for it on fourth and one. And there's Jackson Hankey again with another stone wall of a player yep. on a fourth and short situation. He led your group with 10 tackles today. Uh, what makes Jackson, Jackson Hankey the, the special player that he is in those types of situations? Well, he, he, he understands. He watches a lot of film. He's very well versed in, in what the opponent's going to do. He understands defensive calls and run fits. and. Uh, I don't think he wastes a lot of movement on the football field. And yeah. that was a huge play. That was right after, I believe that was the series right after the turnover. Yes. Um, and I'm sure they were thinking, well, these are going to be the nails in the coffin right here. Uh, and that's what we needed. We, energy, momentum is contagious, and, and, and that's what we needed, someone to make a play. And it's good to see one of our seniors do it. Yep, your offense got it going. I thought that was a well-executed passing play on Rajah Nelson's first career touchdown yep. reception. You're thinking quarterback run or quarterback uh, draw, and then Cam pulls it back out, throws a strike to Rajah over the middle. Yeah, Rajah lined up at our, at our uh, I think, our two strong receiver, kind of a hole shot right there. We clear everyone out and try to get him across the middle of the field. He had the defender on his hip, and great catch uh, right over the middle and to score, and uh, you know, all of a sudden there's a little bit of momentum getting created, and, and that was a positive to see that in the second half. Yep, kick the field goal, 27-19. You got to onside kick it, a little bit of a chess match, some, some timeouts back and forth. What's going on back and forth on the sideline? There, kind of take us behind the curtain on that one. Well, we got to fourth and eight. Uh, if, if it would have been fourth and two, fourth and three, decisions might have been different. We knew we were down by two scores. We need, we're going to need a field goal, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. Fourth and eight. Let's take the field goal. Let, let's let's live to see if we can get this onside. Because uh, if all of a sudden you go for it on fourth and eight, you don't know, score. The game's yeah. completely over. And um, you know, Riney came out. Hit a good kick. We got it. And, uh, uh, of course, there was a little bit of chess match at the end. Uh, they wanted to see And we continued to change up our picture every single time. And uh, I thought we were competitive and had an opportunity at the end. Yeah, absolutely. 27-19, to 19, the final. South Dakota State prevails in the marker game. Let's take a look at our second half highlights presented by Gate City Bank. Tries to get the first down. He was met immediately, though. No signal. Bison defense thinks they got it. They stopped him here. Everybody pointing, and it's NDSU ball. The Bison get the stop on fourth down. Second down and five on the first Western Bank and Trust down in distance as Ganella gets it again. He'll bounce to the outside here as Ganella's pushed out of bounds. Miller. This time with time, slings this out. That sprawls immediately. It goes backwards. He's going. Second down and seven. Miller evades the pressure, got some open running room. He slides down. He's picked up a Bison first down to the 36-yard line and a gain of nine. Miller to the outside. That one hauled in. Sproles makes a man miss. He's got a first down, bounces off a guy, and gets down inside the 20-yard line. A big-time reception from... Miller thought about running out, throws over the middle, hauled in for a touchdown. Raja Nelson, his first collegiate touchdown. It's second down and seven. Strong slowed up there. That play was blown up by the Bison defense. See Patterson oh, yeah. in the game at quarterback with Miller in there and then up next to him. We have not seen Patterson since the Missouri State game. And Miller will throw, hits Gindorf in the flat for a first down. How about that little package? Their offense, another crack at it. Oladokun spins out, looking for somebody to get open in trouble. And down he goes, it's close, where they mark him at the one-yard line. The Bison were looking for a safety ben. there. Excellent in the punt return game this season. Dustman's going to take as long as he can they're here. And they're going to go out of the end zone. They're going to take the safety. For the Bison. Miller floats that one. Watson on the reception. Makes a man miss. Watson down the sideline. Still with it. Still on his feet. Breaking tackles inside the 24. He's finally brought down one way or the other. Hold down. Kick is up. And that is good. Well, the Bison battle back, have a chance to win after falling behind by the score of 27 to 7. Our final game stats presented by Nodak Insurance Company. And coach, you actually end up out gaining them in this game and total yardage. I know that's that's not the, the, the winning number you want overall right there. That, I apologize for doing that. But um, you guys fought 
came back, had a shot, and I know still frustrating with the, the end result, but uh, put together a second half to give you a chance. Yeah, we did. I mean, our, our kids, I never once anticipated, saw, thought, or even even the, the thought even entered my mind that our kids would quit and give up. I just was frustrated that we didn't start with the urgency and the aggressiveness that we needed to, to play against a good football team on the road. And uh, hopefully we learn from it. If we don't, then, then we're not very intelligent. But uh, we, we need to let this one burn a little bit and flush it come Monday once we go back and review it and learn from it. And then we got to get ready for another one next week on the road. Yep. Cam Miller, over 200 yards passing, a career high in rushing yards in this game. Our NODAC Insurance Company, player of the game. Cam, tough loss today. What wasn't clicking for your offense? You know, we had some costly um, penalties early in the first and second half. You know, we got to clean that kind of stuff up. We got to use cadence a little bit better. Um, you know, I thought we were pretty efficient in the pass game. Um, you know, I thought I thought the guys up front did pretty well. We just we just couldn't put it in the end zone. You know, on on, on that last or second to last drive there where we had at the two yard line, um, first and goal. Um, I just I just ran into the guard and um, that was a pretty big play there. Why was it so hard to get the run game going in today's game? I think their front seven's pretty good, but I think honestly I think we did I don't know we did a decent job, um, but. You know, they were just bringing their safeties down and getting in the run game. Um, so we, sh I mean, we were supposed to hit them deep, but we just didn't do that today. One last question for you, Cam. you got two games left. How are you going to rally? Uh, you know, I think we're going to use this as a learning moment. You know, we still have all of our goals in check. Uh, you know, we can still win a conference championship, and, um, you know, we can still win a national championship. So we just got to keep the guys positive and motivated and use this as a learning experience. Cam Miller, coach, our NODAC insurance company player of the game, made some nice throws. Obviously, you want to eliminate the turnovers, um, but but overall, um, some good, solid statistics yep. and uh, not a perfect game by any means, but but a quality effort today from Cam. It was. Cam's going to come and give you everything he has. We, we got him involved in the run game a little bit. He made some big-time throws for us. We talked about the throw to Raja, uh, the one right down the, the in the fourth quarter, the one Christian. down the, the two yeah. to Christian where we got him matched up on the Mike linebacker. Another great throw where only Christian could make it. And you know, he, Just like our football team, we're a work in progress, and we're going to continue to get better. Uh, I, I, can, I know that for sure. I feel comfortable saying that. And I know Cam will be right back in the office and in the football facility tomorrow making sure that he learns from this game. Yep. Well, to Merrick Williams, we're seeing more and more of him in that Bison running back spot. Logan Campbell has a conversation with him, the SMU transfer. Our Olaf Anderson feature story is coming up next. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time, which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. And this means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life.
And welcome back to the Bison Football Show. Bison running back Tamaric Williams getting more and more comfortable at that running back position. The SMU transfer fitting in here at NDSU. Logan Campbell talks with him. Here's our Olaf Anderson feature story. Tamaric Williams is a long way from home. The Dallas native transferred to NDSU after spending two seasons at SMU. The running back was ready for a change of scenery. I knew what the team was about. Um, I knew I knew that they, that they prided themselves on excellence and perfection, and uh, I knew that was something I wanted to be a part of. They got something special here. The Texas native found his new home at NDSU. For Williams, the transition was easier than expected, thanks to his teammates. We got a lot of unselfish guys in the running back room, so just coming here, being around a team like these guys, I've enjoyed the camaraderie so far, and they've, they really make the transition smooth for me. Williams started building confidence during his second week of fall camp. As his confidence continued to build, so did his reps on the field. Just for me and my play style, I'm, I'm more of a downhill runner anyways, and, and that's pretty much how the offense is here. So uh, I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing for me. The junior has quickly found success, leading to him earning the coach's trust in just weeks. Uh, it makes me feel more comfortable, and uh, it, just, it just lets me know that they, that they trust me, that I go out there every Saturday and play as hard as I can and do my job. Although Williams is just getting started, he's already started creating a name for himself inside the Fargo Dome. Touchdown, Tameric Williams! My mentality is uh, I really just try to take it one play at a time, um, focus on the little details, and I know if I do that, everything else will take care of itself. So. I'm Logan Campbell reporting. All right, great stuff there. Logan Campbell, our Olaf Anderson feature story. This guy's running hard, Coach. I know you're happy with what he's doing right now. He has uh, I've been impressed in his growth since he got here in, in, in June. Um, it, it's been a whirlwind for him. New, new terminology, new scheme, new system, new expectations. He's done a great job uh, of getting himself accustomed to it, understanding it, and that's why you're seeing him play more and more. Mm -hmm. And even playing when he doesn't carry the football in protections. And um, We challenge all our kids to be great when you don't have the ball, and he's done a good job of that of late. Yep. Time now for our great clips, great question of the week. Go to the WDAY Facebook page, drop off a question for Coach. This one from Pat and Pembina, Coach. Marker game obviously has a rivalry-like feel. What, is, what does rivalry football mean to you and to this football team? It's a big piece in the college football discussion. Well, I mean, I think it's what's good about college football. Yeah. It's one of the positive things when you have a, an opponent that you respect, but also uh, there's a lot of energy that surrounds the game. You know, from internally, we try not to make more of it. Mm -hmm. Then, then we allow the media, we allow the outsiders to create the buzz and the noise because I'm – one of those that gets concerned about distractions mm -hmm. and, and excuses, and I try to eliminate those things. And um, but it is exciting to have uh, you know, a, high, a highly contested game yep. and one that our players look forward to every year. Yep, absolutely. Coming up next on the Bison Football Show, we take a look at a young man making it happen for the herd. Finn Diggins, our Peterson Farm Seed future crop of Bison. That's on the way next. Bison Nation, this is head football coach Matt Entz. With all that goes into leading the Bison to victory, the last thing I want to worry about is the clothing I need to look and feel my best. I shop at Halberstadt's West Acres because I trust that they provide me with everything I need for meetings at the office, press conferences, and casual Bison attire. With plenty of options for sport coats, shirts, denim, suits, shoes, and accessories, I'm confident that when I need anything and everything menswear, Halberstadt's West Acres has me covered. Since NoDak Insurance Company started, we've gone from paying by mail to paying online. Your proof of insurance in the glove box has changed to a quick tap to our online app. And as new technologies make farming more efficient, our coverage ensures you're always protected. The way we live and work has changed. 
but our values, service, and commitment have remained the same. NODAC is constantly evolving to meet your insurance needs and deliver answers where and when you need them most. NODAC Insurance Company, agents with answers. Powerful and playful. Delicate and precise. Bold and carefree. It's the way you move, and it moves us. To deliver care for your whole family, to provide options beyond the expected, to help you leave pain in the past and find your way forward. Orthopedics and Sports Medicine at Sanford Health. Health lives here. And welcome back to the Bison Football Show. You always like to see the development of the crew chiefs, tight ends, and fullbacks over the years. Finn Diggins making it happen right now with his chance, a young player in that NDSU tight end room. Logan Campbell talks with him. It's our Peterson Farm Seed future crop of Bison. Growing up in Perham, Minnesota, Finn Diggins has always had his eyes set on the green and gold. Well, obviously only being an hour away, um, everything is Bison Nation up here. Um, you walk into any store, it's all full of Bison gear and everything like that, and the culture is just amazing. And also being close to home, it wasn't really that hard to make my decision. That culture is something the freshman has experienced firsthand. Um, my dad is a mortician, and so, like I said, we're only an hour away, and he had people that would skip his family members' funerals to go watch a Bison game in Fargo. Back in Minnesota, the tight end was used to dominating on the field. But since his arrival to NDSU, he's quickly realized college football players are a whole new breed. I'm used to being the biggest guy out there, and now there's 11 other guys on the football field that look just like me, and it's just a little bit different than what I was used to. Now he wants to make several trips to Frisco in his time as a Bison. Win as many national championships as I can in the next four years, so that's, that's my goal. <laughs> I'm Logan Campbell reporting. All right, great stuff from Logan Campbell right there, Coach. It's always fun to see all these young guys, all the great tight ends throughout the years, fullbacks. Yeah, it takes a little time to crack the lineup physically to get ready. Finn Diggins, I know, someone you're looking forward to with big things down the road, learning what it takes to be a bison in that room. Oh, he has, and he's done a great job so far this year. Uh, he's a huge part of our scout team. Uh, he's been in the weight room. Coach Kramer's got him developing. Uh, he reminds me of a, another tight end. And we had a few years ago uh, from over in that northwest side of, of Minnesota. Um, so the Perm native Finn Diggins, Whew. maybe the best name in college football, in my opinion. Yeah. He's, he's going to do good things for us. Our opponent preview time. Take a look at the next matchup coming up against the Youngstown State Penguins. It's brought to you by Gate City Bank. Coach, uh, long travel heading out to Northeast Ohio. Stambaugh Stadium taking on this Youngstown State team. Earlier kick, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central time. Up one for the Bison, falling in the marker by the final of 27 to 19. For our entire WDAY crew, my name's Jeff Colhane. Good night, Bison Nation. Today's Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz has been presented by Gate City Bank and Pepsi.